Okay, today is Monday, August 3rd, 2020. This is the Kubernetes CSI implementation meeting. Our first agenda for today is to go down our 119 status. So um, I think we are mainly waiting to, uh, or working on cutting um, the new sidecars. Um, let's go through that at the end after we go down all the other um, other statuses. So let's see. Um, there is one change that I would like to get into the node driver registrar to make um, to make the socket creation reconciling. I think right now it basically creates it on startup, but then if for some reason the socket got deleted at some point afterwards, it doesn't try to recreate it and re-register. So um, that's a change that would be nice to get in. I guess it's not strictly required. It's just a nice to have, but... Um, if it gets deleted, does the thing crash? No. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, if it just crashed, then it would start up again and create the socket again, and you'd be back in business. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I think basically the scenario I'm thinking of is if like for whatever reason you have like two CSI plugins of the same thing registered on a node and then you shut down one of them, shutting down one of them is going to unregister the driver, but then there's still one running and it won't re-register. Um, so that's sort of the scenario I'm thinking of for this change. Um, I'll see if I can get someone on my team to work on this. Um, it would be a good to have, I think. Um, let's see. There was a, a scalability enhancement that went into um, the lib external provisioner. This removes one get call, and that amazingly um, doubles the throughput that external provisioner can do. Uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I think we'll want to cut a new lib external provisioner and pull that into the um, the CSI provisioner um, so we can get that into the next release. Um, are there any other pending changes in the lib external provisioner that we're waiting for? Okay, if not, then maybe, um, Jan, would you be able to cut a new lib external provisioner? Okay, I may try. All right, thank you very much. Uh, um, by the way, yeah. it needs to be a release candidate because it uses Kubernetes by 19 release candidate. Okay. Uh, so we should be using 119 right, for everything, right? That's not. That's why it's the problem. Well, we don't have final uh, one nineteen, so there is only one nineteen release candidates too. I think used in the library. Therefore, right. I should not cut the final release, but release candidate. Oh, you're saying we should wait until the release? Is that what do you no, mean? Um, with the final release of the library, yes, I oh. want to use final release of the Oh, command. okay, then we have to wait until the, we have to wait for Kubernetes release, right? Otherwise, it's it's going to be RC. That's the best we can do right now. Yeah. I think, well, for the sidecars, I'm okay cutting official sidecars with RCs as the dependencies. Hmm. I think, because it's like an, an internal detail right it's not like the sidecars are actually exposing the apis yeah but if there is a bug in client go then nobody well, there can be still bug in the generated code that gets fixed by the final release possibly I mean, I guess we can wait. Um, it'll just be, it means that we'll have to 
um, wait a week or two after the uh, Kubernetes cuts before we can actually cut all the sidecars. All right. Um, the next thing I've been working on trying to update all our um, E2E images to get off of the staging, temporary staging repo and onto the official uh, production images. Um, I had to release a new host path driver um, to do this and I'm updating the Kubernetes, Kubernetes tests with um, older sidecar versions um, in order to uh, to make this change. I guess our internal CI has to wait though um, because they're all trying to use all the um, new unreleased stuff. So um, I'll, I'll get the change in, in Kubernetes, Kubernetes in uh, should be this week, but then I guess the host path stuff has to wait until until after we officially cut all the other sidecars. Um, I have a question. Yeah. The, so I'm looking at the under the GCR uh, stick storage images. I don't see snapshot controller. I only see CSI snapshot. Is there a reason for um, controller? Uh, let's see. Do is there no? Oh, I think I actually I I was looking at this too. Um. Oh yeah, I was trying to fix this. Yes, <laughs> there is no snapshot controller. Yeah. So I was trying to fix it by copying the Quay image over to our staging repo and then promoting it. Um, but I I ran into that, to that issue where I couldn't pull images from Quay for some oh, reason. Oh, okay. Um, Is that resolved? Still have a problem? I it's probably still unresolved. But if anyone else has permissions to pull from Quay and push to our staging. Um, that would be greatly appreciated if you can pull the snapshot controller. Uh, I don't think I can push to this staging if we don't have the permission to do that. Are you not listed as an admin? Um, I'm not even sure where is the place to check that. OK. OK, well, let me figure out who's a admin for this Kate staging six storage and, and try to figure it out. Okay. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why I have Quay issues, but anyway. Um, yeah, so that's that's one more missing piece. But we also need the the warning house. That's why I was looking at this, because we need to uh, put together how to deploy that, how to test that, right? So I want to, want to know how to add that for warning house, the images. Oh, so uh, volume health images, I think, are already there. Hmm? I didn't see it. Uh, when I was checking um, the, under six storage, I don't see, I don't even see a phone. Oh no, so the the six storage, the the Kate's, what is it? Kate's artifact, are you, were you looking at Kate's staging or Kate's artifacts prod? I'm looking at the, the I'm looking at the GCR images. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, no, K Kubernetes it's artifacts a, prod, is that the? Oh, okay. Yeah, so for prod, we need to promote them from staging. Mm -hmm. um, so that is just modifying this file here and then adding the SHA to it. And that will automatically promote it to the staging um, repo. So we can do that. I think the main thing is you need to know um, what images are available from staging, the SHA of the images and staging. And that should be there. Um, is this, am I in the right project? Yes. So we have, yeah, they're here. What is this folder? Can you uh, put this somewhere so I can go check? Yeah. Um, I think for this, to see this page, you might have to be an admin. So I need to double check um, and make sure you're an admin so you can see this. 
Okay. But um, but yeah, we have. It's been pushing, I think. So we have Canary Images. Oh, last updated a very long time ago. Um, or. I think pushed is pushed is to upload it is two days ago. Why I don't know sure I'm not sure why created is is that old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um it looks like it's been it's been pushed <laughs> recently. Well, something else has that in six nine. I don't know what I mean. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, that's probably some metadata. Like a place, problem. Basement. I don't know. Even the <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're there. So, you know, if you want to cut an RC, the RC will show up here too. Um, and then to, to promote it to prod, we actually need to cut like a real, a non RC tag. Um, and then, and then add it to this spec here to promote it to the prod bucket. Okay, so maybe I'll pin you offline and I, I, I need to, I cannot see the whole thing. And yeah, <laughs> let me make sure everyone here has admin um, permissions on this so they can see that. All right. Um, where were we? All right. Um, next up, we have storage capacity tracking. Welcome back, Patrick. I, I just went through my emails today and it looks like when nothing major blew up, thanks for dealing with that one test regression that came from pod deletion, from the pod deletion change for ephemeral volumes. Um, next up for me is getting back to the external provisioner changes for storage capacity tracking. That is something that ideally should still go into the next external provisioner release. But on the other hand, if you are currently preparing for external provisioner 2.0, we might also just do that release. And if I get the, the creation part of storage capacity tracking done, do another 2.1 or so. But yeah, that works. Um, I think it sounds like anyway, we, we, need, we want to wait until after Kubernetes 119 is cut before releasing the sidecars. So okay. um, we still have some time. Yeah, but that's fine then. All right, um, let's see. And then we talked about image publishing. I think this is pretty much, this is, I get, the yeah, last I, I, thing is to um, update all our tests. So we're in the progress of doing yeah. that. Yeah, I've, I've seen your PR, but that looks fine. It, it was failing uh, for the GCE snap or some some snapshot tests were failing on GCE. I'm not sure whether that's related to the PR or test flake. But mm, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Regarding Windows, um, I think things are going. There's a bunch of PRs I see out for it. So um, they're making some progress on this. Uh, next, we have volume health. Yeah, so the, the, the test PR got merged. I, and then there was a one PR that uh, they're working on, which is to, right now, the, you know, the events are not sent to the pod. So you add that. Once that's done, I think we can update README. So that's why we need to have the images available. OK. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. And next up, we have snapshots. Uh, so I'm still waiting for that, the move API and generate client. I thought it's ready, but then I, when I put that PR, when I tried it out, uh, it was not what I expected. I mean, the, when the code was generated, it actually generated the, the V2 folder, but we do not want to have that. So I don't know how he, uh, made that PR. So I, uh, so I was, uh, asking that, uh, colleague to uh, get back to me. So uh, just that one thing. OK, sounds good. And then um, Andy has a cap out to um, um, to uh, go over how we want to introduce a webhook 
Yeah. Um, yeah for so the beta the, API. The product should be in progress, right? Or do we have another? Maybe that's another, okay, another extra one. Oh, actually, we have an item down on the left. Can There's a yeah item for a webhook. Uh, I guess it's yeah, in progress. So that one, that one is in progress. Yeah, so uh, we also uh, reviewed that in the uh, data protect, data protection group meeting the other day. So I think some folks in that group is also reviewing it. Okay, uh, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, I think the main thing to think about is so like we want to introduce the webhook to start uh, rejecting um, new objects that are being created. Mm -hmm. um, the, main, the main thing that I think we still need to figure out is how do we deal with existing objects that are invalid and how do we clean those up? Yeah, um, yeah. So deal with the, that. That's the hard part. Right, so I think the conservative uh, approach is just to don't, don't clean up, leave them there. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, but then of course you always have those uh, <laughs> things left there. That's the downside. Yeah, yeah. So I think the main the main problem is is like once we start enforcing the validation on all objects, even existing objects, then you won't be able to delete the old and valid objects. Yeah, yeah. which is I think, not great. Yeah, it just looks ugly. But then they, I mean, yeah, that that just have to be always there. But then they, if we don't delete them forcefully, then they can still use the underlying resources if there are any. But if we clean them up and just worry that we will always yeah. clean up the underlying resources, then that's could be data loss, right? So that's a big problem, bigger problem than, yeah. than having some ugly <laughs> unused data that doesn't hang around. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. so, yeah, so I like, so I like to, because of this uh, thing that right, we need uh, to have, do this in, you know, initially add this and then um, and then the next phase is the GA. So I'm hoping that we can also get this one in by the end of the month, mm -hmm. you cut mm -hmm. them together. Uh, yeah, so we'll, yep. yeah, I think Andy, um, Andy is, has been working on implementing the webhook. Okay. Um, so he should have a PR out I, probably this week, I think. Oh, okay, that's good. That's uh, promising, so uh, yeah. Uh, definitely want to get that get this one in. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the need the need to have a webhook I think is is not controversial. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, we said yeah, go ahead, start implementing the webhook. I think the main thing we need to figure out is how do we clean up those invalid objects and we can have like that's a sort of orthogonal discussion we can have. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think there are some concerns about like making the rules too strict. <laughs> so we, we were had some some people are having concerns when we were discussing this. When you cannot change anything when you know we're tightening all the restrictions. <laughs> so there were yeah. Some concerns. But uh, yeah, but yeah, the, I definitely think we should have this. Anyway. Okay. Sounds good. Um and then next is volume expansion. Is Hamat here? Nope. I think I think the resizer is um, ready to go. I think we're just waiting. We're just waiting for the one nineteen release, I guess. Um, and then in tree, I think Hamant is is still working on a couple of bug fixes for some of the scenarios. I think that's the main update on that. Um, okay, so that's all the features going up to our provision, um, our sidecar releases. Um, I think so on the provisioner front. I'm waiting on those two changes. Um, first is the storage capacity stuff, and the second thing is the um, the lib external provisioner. I think those are the only two changes I'm waiting on there. Um, for the attacher side, is that ready to go? Yes, attacher is all ready to go. Um, Oh, there was one bug that came in. I don't know if you saw it. Um, 
but the list volumes logic is not working for plugins that don't have entry equivalents. Hmm. Okay, I can check. There's a yeah, there's a bug that was open like sometime late last week. Um, um, where the list volume stuff doesn't work for non-migration plugins. So um, I'm gonna have I asked a person on my team to take a look at this. So I think they should have a fix out soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, here, I'll just mark this as not ready again. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, Snapshotter, I think, Xing, you said you're waiting for the um, the API, the, the um, Go module change? Yeah, I think we should also wait for the web hooker since it's getting mm -hmm. very close. Yeah, we need that. Okay. Um, let's see, and I think, I'll double check with Hamad, but I'm pretty sure the resizer is ready. Um, no driver registrar. Uh, Jan, did you have a chance to look at this? I am waiting for the last patch from some Amazon guy who runs the registrar not in a container. So they need uh, to have the path configurable because we hard code okay. the registration path. And he's not, well, he fixed it, but he needs to be base and takes time. Okay. Uh, there was one more change that I would like to get in, but it's not like critical. So if we don't get it in in time I'm cutting, I think that's okay. But um, there's one more change I want to make to make the um, the creation of the registration socket reconciling. Do you have a patch? I am working on getting someone to work on a patch, <laughs> which okay. seems to be my job these days. <laughs> um, the uh, Did you get a chance to look at Liveness Probe? No, I did not. OK. I don't think there's anything we're waiting on there. There was maybe one bug fix that went in a while ago. Um, and then host path driver. So I cut a 1.4 because we haven't released a host path driver since like February. Um, and it had a lot of bug fixes in it. I cut a 1.4. It still, it doesn't use um, the newer sidecars. It's all using older sidecars. Um, and so once we actually release all of the new sidecars, I'll update the host path driver again and then cut another one. Um, oh, and should then we, should add the wooden house here now. The uh, what is it called? The uh, a house health. monitor. It's no yeah. house monitor. <laughs> There's like a node agent. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just agent, I think, no node. Just house, um, monitor controller, and monitor agent. <laughs> Do we also need to cut the a, the mock driver? Um, oh, did we make any changes in it? I think we might, you add it the health stuff in it, is that right? Uh, we, yeah, we have made some changes for the volume health stuff. Okay. Yeah, we'll need to cut a new mock driver then. Um, let's just call this. Um, let's see, Shin, can I put your name down for yeah. handling the release of these? Cool. And I can take a look at the mock driver. All right. We have a lot of components. <laughs> <laughs> this is a snapshot right. or you just use just one entry, but you added two entries for the <laughs> for the one house. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. We have two. Well, okay, okay. 
I guess when we cut them, they're all like they're separate. They're yeah. all cut in the same repo. Yeah. I'll just call it health monitor then. Yeah. Uh oh, what happened? Okay. Um, that's all I have on the agenda. Anything else? Anyone wants to talk about? All right, then we'll end for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.